Hello everyone. Today we'll show how to use Python. We have an academic paper here with some annotations done in the supernote. We've already selected areas we want to digest using light gray pen strokes. We also erased the PDF area using a white marker. We're first moving it to Python input. This is a folder that we had set in Python settings as the source of PDF to digest. We're broadcasting this screen to show the action that will take place on a computer, and we've also turned on the Browse and Access feature of the Supernote, because we want to use this transfer mode for this demo. Let's open the file. We see a few handwritten notes and a few highlights. I intentionally used three types of highlights here, color only, underlined, and color plus comment. We can see that the PDF already has a table of contents, and we can see here four annotation pages. Let's head to the computer now. We have the shortcut to the script here. Since Python Digest is a console app with minimal interaction with the user, the shortcut color visually tells you when the code is running. Just a little gadget. I also cleaned Python Vault, meaning that the only non-install files on this computer are the user settings. There are no cached files, text recognition dictionaries, nor local copies of any file, Basically, just a clean install. Okay, let's double click on the shortcut. It changes color. That's cool. The terminal shows that Python did not find a supernote on the USB port, but it found it on the Wi Fi. Perfect. And we can see that it has started to submit images to Microsoft Computer Vision. While it is at it, let's take a look at the vault. We can see a folder called SN Local. This is the real source of the Python script. Python cannot work directly on the supernote. It downloads a local copy. It also creates a cache folder to hold PDF files. Some of them could be fairly large, so caching saves time for future script execution. Indeed, Python will first check if it can use its local copy before downloading a file. What else? Oh yes, the pixdict.json file. That's a dictionary of recognized text. Python stores the hash of the pictures it has already submitted to MS Computer Vision and the corresponding text response. For all future calls, the script first checks to see if it has a local copy before making an API call. Now let's look at the timestamp folder. If you are not in debug mode, the folder gets deleted at the end of the script. Within that folder, Python creates a subfolder for each of the digested documents. Let me try to use a thumbnail view of these files. You can see some cropped pictures of the PDF, and also some fragments of my handwritten notes. Behind the hood, Python does some image processing, mixing pictures, removing some colors, assembling puzzles. Just kidding. Okay, it looks like the shortcut is back to black. That means the code is done. Let's switch back to the camera. We can see that the Python export folder now has a file. That folder holds the merged PDF plus mark files as a single PDF. This means that the files in that folder no longer contain pen strokes. You may still annotate them, including erasing sections with a white pen, but you won't be able to select past handwritten notes. In a certain sense, it's like the export you have natively on the supernote, except that... Number one, remember that we used a light gray pen stroke to loosely circle what we wanted to digest. Well, that's gone. And it looks like my handwritings are gone, too. And what do we have here instead? We have a rectangle that snapped around the original PDF text. We also have a little pointy carrot on the left. That carrot for Python means there's some information next to me. Oh yeah, what kind of information? Turns out, the rectangle on its right is a link to the corresponding digested area. Wait, what? Yes, and Python has added a page for that digest to your PDF. And not only that, it has moved your handwritten notes there too. And yes, it has drawn lines to help you write straight. And guess what? It's bi-directional, meaning that I can tap the digested text to go back to its location in the original file. You're welcome. Let's look at another such example. Cool. But what about this carrot here? There's no rectangle. If you recall, this was a highlight with a comment. Supernote doesn't visually make a distinction on the page. You have to open the highlights menu to see if a comment was captured. 
Let's call it the second difference. Would you agree? Number three. You remember that black print that I couldn't read? I circled and crossed it with a white marker. That, for Python, is a PDF eraser. Circle something in white, and it will erase the PDF content. You could imagine trimming out everything not so interesting in the original document, because it's not relevant, or because you want to make room for some notes. Let's take a look at the table of contents. This academic paper came with its own TOC. But look at the bottom. That's right, we have a table of contents for the digests. Let's tap on one. It brings us to the digest. And as we saw, we can tap again to go to the digest notes. All right? Now let's go to the extended menu. And let's try a search for distribution, for example. You can see here on page 29 a matching sentence corresponding to my handwritten comment, and that, ladies and gentlemen, was number five. Okay, all this was for the Python export PDF that merged into a PDF. The original PDF plus the digest summary pages it added in the MARC file. But what about Python output? I am glad you asked. First of, see that? Whilst the last export file had in postfix underscore e, this file has a postfix underscore. Let me repeat what I said before. You could ask Python to upload its outputs to the same folder it used as input. Depending on the type of file transfer used, this could result in deleting inadvertently your original file if Python wasn't adding those postfixes. But at the end of the day, feel free to modify the code. You're ready. Let's dive in this file. Did I say this? Technically. You see, I should have said these, plural. Because what you see now is a screen representation of a PDF and a MARC file, like in the input folder. But unlike the input file, my selection pen strokes aren't there. Instead, we have the rectangles and caret that we had in the export file. The reason you don't see the selection and erasing pen strokes is that Python modified the MARC file, too. To prove it, let's select our handwritings. Everything else is like in the export PDF file we saw before. The handwritten notes that were copied to the digest summary are indeed read-only, and in a sense I now have a duplication of flat-ended handwritings and the selectable pen strokes. But you have the choice to either use the white marker to remove the summary digest notes, or use the lasso to remove your original handwritings, or keep both. Okay, so how would someone use Python in practice? Perhaps illustrating our options and two scenarios may help. On the left of the screen is a supernote screenshot of the Python export file. Let's call it JB underscore E. On the right, a screenshot of the Python output file that we will refer to as JB underscore. Now, let's consider two scenarios. Scenario one, you've had a first read of the paper, taking some initial notes on the margin and you know exactly what section you want to dig in with digest. In this case, the Python export could become your new document to review. It basically built the links you needed. You would fill the digest summaries, perhaps rerun a last version of Python for the last export to have all your handwritten notes searchable. Scenario 2. You need more flexibility. You want to be able to delete digests, shuffle, delete, or regroup existing notes, etc. In this case, you are better off making a Python output become your new working document. All right, let's demo scenario two. We'll mirror the supernote instead of switching between the supernote and the screen. First, let's copy the output to our Python input folder. Let's rename it JB new. Oh well, TB will do it too. As shown before, 
I can shuffle some stuff around. And assume I was happy with my flattened handwritings as they are in the digest summary. So I will select all the text here and delete. See that trash can in the selection menu? I love this since the last firmware update. I don't need any gestures anymore with my Lamy. All right, now let's try something new. We saw how Python interprets our light gray and white colors to respectively select and erase. But what follows here is more complex. By erasing all or part of the little carrot on the left side of a digest link, we're gonna tell Python to remove the link. Erasing is a basic functionality, but think about it for a second. Because we run code outside of the supernote, we need the code to interpret the position of the stroke above a PDF print and act accordingly to delete pages, remove links, etc. So there's some not so easy things happening in the background, but the cool thing is this. We could formalize a standard of building smart PDF templates where actions happen to specific icons, checkboxes, etc. being hit with a color. So in theory, you wouldn't need to upload a 1000 page template with thousands of links. You could have a script running on the supernote or externally that interprets, builds or returns specific things to the supernote. Enough chatting. Okay. Another thing we'll do is use that vacant space we created in the PDF. All we have to do to refresh our doc is to double click our shortcut. In the terminal, you can see that TB new is being processed. Let's watch the Python output folder of the supernote. There it is, our new output with the underscore. Let's open it. The previous shortcut is indeed gone. Everything else is there. We can repeat this experiment one more time. Let's move TB new to the input folder and perhaps deleting the old files is going to reduce the risk of confusion with all these versions. Let's run again. The icon shortcut is white. Python is back to work. Okay, it's done. Oh, I forgot to mention that I had changed the debug mode to false, and that's why there is no more temporary folder. Let's open the output folder. We see the TB new underscore underscore. That's also confusing, so let's do some cleanup. Let's do a quick search for removed and we get to that handwritten comment I made. And one last modification. If you are sleeping these last five minutes, say we want to keep table 16 results, we circle it. This time, let's rename the file my last JB and move it to the input folder, remove the old one, and launch Python. Let's go to the output folder. Open, search, type keep and bad example. Too many such words, but our sentence is there. Thank you for watching. The link to the repository is below as well as the link to the install video. If you have any question or find a bug, please open an issue on the GitLab repository.